here Shabra with all of you. It's a pleasure. It's always an honor to be here with Pastor Joe and his wife and his kids. And I just love you guys so much. Thank you so much for having us. But we are here today to lift up the name of Jesus. We are here today because of him. We are only here today because he deserves all the honor, all the praise, all the honor. And I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet right now. And I ask them to put a song. I don't know if they are able to do it. I want you to sing from the depths of your soul. Let's fill this, uh, this place with the atmosphere of faith. It's our faith that unlock miracles. It's our faith that will bring him down here. It's our faith that will manifest his presence. It's not up to him. It's up to us. I know you are waiting for my husband to preach, and I know he's full. I know he has something to pour out into your life today. But let's fill this atmosphere with faith. Let's draw from Jesus today. If you're expecting something, expecting from him. That's him. He is the one that can do exactly what you are waiting for. Nicholas, can you put the song? We are to your name. It's his name oh, that is above Lord. all name. Praises to your name. Ha, Father, we sing praises to oh, your name. Lord, sing. For sing. your name is great. Great. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Sing praises to, to your, your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. To your name. Praises to your name. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, Father, we love you. For your name, we worship you. Is great and greatly to be. Come on, you can do better than that. Sing, sing loud because He deserves it. Praises to your name. Yeah, don't be shy. Just oh, sing. Oh Lord, praises, praises to, to your name. name. Oh Lord. For your, your name, name is great, great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah! I sing praises, praises to your name. The name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. He deserves Praises it. to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. For your oh, name is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, oh Lord. We praise your praise name. Praise to your name. Oh, Lord. For your, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I sing praises Hallelujah. to your name. Father, thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you for the name of Jesus. To your name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, for your, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Praises to your name. Oh, oh Lord. For your, your name, name is great. great. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To your name. Hey. Sing with joy. He's here. He can oh, hear you. Lord. He can hear your heart. For your he can name hear your prayer. is great. 
and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> praises, praises to your name. Oh, Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, we sing praises to your name tonight, Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Praises to your name. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you for the angels in this for place. Your name thank you, Father. Great. And great Hallelujah. to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you that miracles are happening right now. Father, thank you that chains are being broken right now. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is great and greatly to be Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We worship you. Father, thank you. That is not about us. It's about you. We worship it's not you, Lord. about our name. It's about we the name of Jesus. You, Lord. Father, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you for the name of Jesus. Yes, the Lord name God. that is above all names. The name that is above my name. That is the name. The name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank we you, love you. God. We worship you. Oh, Father, thank you. <laughs> Father, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence in this hallelujah, place tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, thank you for our angels among us. Father, thank you. Thank you for healing happening right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord. even before my husband started to preach, I believe that you're already doing it. I believe, Father. Thank you, Father because God. Because you are a good God. You are an awesome God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we can trust you. We can trust your promises. Father, thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated. And I'm hallelujah, going to share a hallelujah. Bit. As I was worshiping the Lord, I kind of just felt a little bit to share with you a little bit of my testimony. Because it's not about us. It's about him. It's not about our name. It's about the name of Jesus. And I wanted to tell you, that don't miss the supernatural waiting for the spectacular. That's right. Jesus was all about the supernatural, not anything about the spectacular. In fact, the Jewish people did not receive him because he did not come in a spectacular way. He came on a supernatural way. Amen. And sometimes we can miss that. Sometimes we're waiting for a lightning coming from heaven. And he's just right there beside you. Telling you, I love you. Trust me. But we want it our way. And he's telling you tonight, trust me. Trust in my love. Trust my promises. Amen. Trust on my word. He's faithful. He's faithful. I wanted to tell you, I was born in a very poor city in Brazil. Could never even imagine that one day I would come from the USA. Did not even know anything. But even before I met Jesus, in the little town in Brazil, every night when I went to sleep, I kind of felt something inside of me that was bigger than what actually I was living. 
So I did not know Jesus, so I was talking to God. And I told him and said, God, something is wrong. When I close my eyes, I see things that I don't have in this city. I see things that I don't see around me. So I either I'm crazy or I'm on the wrong place. And little did I know that right before that, he sent me to another city called Sao Paulo, which is huge like New York. And I was very happy just to be in Sao Paulo. But I met Jesus there. He brought me to his house. He cleansed me. He saved me. And his purpose in my life opened, made room for where I am today. So I wanted to tell you, it's not about where you were born. It's not about the money that you have, not the house that you have. It's not about anything on this world. It's all good. But the purpose that, the purpose that he has in your life is bigger than what you think. It's the purpose in your life that will make room for you. It's the purpose of in your life that actually will take you to where you need to be. So do not be afraid of trusting God. Charles Cap, it's a he was a good man of God. In one of his books, he said, the devil doesn't care if you go to heaven or to hell. He does not want you to be here. And why that? Because it's here that you're going to fulfill the will of God. It's here that you're going to heal the sick. It's here that you're going to preach the gospel. It's here on this world that you're going to find who you are in Christ Jesus. When you go to heaven, you're going to worship him for eternity. But it's here. He wants to steal your dreams. He wants to steal your purpose. He wants to bring you to a stage of depression, frustration. Because sometimes when we don't see things happening, when we think we need, we kind of just feel like, I don't think God is real. I don't think that he is listening to me. I don't think he hears when I pray. Let me tell you, he's faithful. But the devil is the one that is fighting to take you down. The devil is the one that is trying to steal your faith. If he steals your faith, he steals everything. The only thing that holds us on this world is our faith in Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I don't know if you saw what happened in France during the Olympics. He was mocking Christianity. They were mocking the cross. You know why? Because he was defeated by the cross. He was defeated by Jesus. You don't see the devil going after any other religion. You don't see him going after any other religion. He goes after the cross. He goes after anything to do with the cross. Why? Because the power of resurrection is the most powerful thing on earth. And I wanted to tell you tonight, I don't think you realize when you sing this song, I sing praise to the name of Jesus because you carry it inside of you the most powerful things on earth, the power of resurrection. The earth will not know any other power that is bigger than the power of the name of Jesus. Nothing that will ever happen on this earth, we will ever compare to the name of Jesus, to the power that brought him from the dead. And the Bible says when Jesus died on the cross, the earth was shaken. The sun hid itself. Everything was dark. But that's my opinion. The nature that was made by his name because the Bible says everything was made by the word of God. He said, just be light, and light was. So the sun was made by the word of God, right? And the Bible says that the word of God was Jesus. So when he was hanging on the cross, they knew who he was. They knew. 
the nature, the earth, and everything that was created knew that the very word was hanging on the cross. And the devil for a minute thought that he won. For a minute he thought he destroyed everything. For a minute he, he thought that he was going to reign on this earth. For a minute he thought that he got the, the, the humanity. For a minute he thought that every plan that God was, had made to connect the humanity with him again was canceled. But after three days, after three days, after three days, Jesus rose from the dead. And this very power that brought him from the dead he placed inside of you. So if we walk on this earth knowing what we represent here, nothing will take us down. You are not going to be ashamed of the gospel because there is nothing that can compare to this word over here. Nothing. And the devil know that his time is coming. And he wants to take you. He wants to stop you. He wants to confuse you. He wants to make you to believe that God is not God. It's one assignment that he has to prove you that God is not real. If God is real, what so many bad, thing, bad things is happening? Because a lot of people don't believe that God is God. But if I believe, and if you believe, we can change that. So don't be afraid of believing. Don't be afraid of speaking about Jesus. Don't be afraid of carrying the gospel. Don't be afraid of praying for the sick. Because he is responsible for that, not us. We are carriers of the, his name. We are carriers of the word of God. But he is the one that makes miracles to happen. So before my husband even takes the pulpit, you can receive your miracle. Why? Because in this atmosphere, is charged with something that's more powerful than anything on this world. We all go through trials. I go through a lot of things. And one thing that he wanted to prove me, that God is not real, but he is late on the game. God already did too much for him to prove that he is not real. And sometimes we measure God for the amount of times he answers us. It's wrong. Because it's up to us to receive what he already accomplished. It's up to me to take a hold of what he already gave me. He doesn't need to prove that he's God to anybody. He does not need us. He wants us. He loves us. He's God on himself. He does not need me. But he wants me. He loves me. He wants you. He wants to hear you. Not because he needs to prove to you, but because he wants to reveal himself to you. It's a lot of difference. So when we put God in a box and say, God, you have to move in this way. No, he will not. You just need to trust him. You need to trust him with everything you have. If you believe you are healed, you are healed. If you believe you are prosperous, you are prosperous. Why? Because he takes pleasure on blessing his children. God does not hold any, anything from you. We do. The devil does. But today, we are going to take hold on what he has for us tonight. We are going to drink from his presence. We are going to pull from what he is because he is good. Can you put the song again, please? He is good and his mercies endure forever. He is good and he is here to set you free from depression. He is good and he is here to set you free from anxiety. He is good and he is here to set you free from fear. He is good and he is here to heal you. 
He is good and He's here to just to tell you, I love you. He's here to break the chains that have holding you back. He's here to tell you it's not the end of the road for you. He's here to renew your faith tonight. He's here to renew your joy tonight. He's here to tell you, yes, you can laugh on this situation. He's here to tell you, yes, you can forgive the person that hurt you. He's here to tell you that you can walk another mile. He's here to pick you up and make you whole tonight. He's here to put your broken heart back into one piece. He's here to tell you, my daughter, my son, I love you. Hallelujah. If you can sing knowing that his very presence is inside of you, speak what you desire from him tonight. Open your mouth and just let him know what you're expecting. God is not a religion. It's a relationship God. He wants to hear from you. He knows everything, but he wants to hear from us. Hallelujah. We sing praises to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority of anything that do not worship you tonight. And we declare, go out from this place in Jesus' name. Father, we declare that oppression and depression have no power over us in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that anxiety, panic attack is broken off of our lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we break the power of our fear tonight. And we declare that the love of the Father cast out all fear. All fear is gone. Oh, shere canter ala la ba 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 she. Hala ba shere canter ala ba 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 she. His name is great. Hallelujah. Thank you. To him now. Sing it to him. His name. What does the name of Jesus mean to you? His name is Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. His name is El Shaddai. He is the God of all things. He's the God of the universe. He's the God of everything you need. He is Jehovah Sikhenu. He's your righteousness. You can now come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in your time of need. And when you desire, you can come boldly and receive from God because he made a way for you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He is Jehovah Sikhanu. He's Jehovah, our banner. He is everything we need, everything we desire. And Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for coming to this earth and making us your kingdom here on earth, Father. Thank you, Lamb of God. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 You know, one thing my wife, she did not say, but she's told me many a times that she, you know, she slept on a hammock. You know what a hammock is, don't you? She slept on a hammock until she was almost 17 years old. She was in a small town, and in this small town, it's, it, it, you know, I don't even think it had a stoplight, did it? No. 
No stoplights in that town. In that small town, no one ever went anywhere. No one ever accomplished anything. And she would sit down and she would lay down on that hammock in the middle of the night. And she would look up at the stars. She'd never seen a, 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 a what do you call it, a stoplight. Never seen one. And she would see lights. She would see things that she was not seeing in the natural I'll tell you, there's things that God wants us to open our eyes to. There's things that God wants us to see that sometimes we can't see because we're blinded by our own works and our own thoughts and our own imaginations. But when we open our eyes and begin to look at Jesus, he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. He starts our faith and he finishes our faith. It's not even about us. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am, I'm not going to be, or I was not, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but the life I now live, I live by faith. The faith of the Son of God. It's not even our faith that allows us to walk in a place of resurrection power. It's His faith. Because it was his faith that raised him from the dead. It was his faith that conquered death, hell, and the grave. It was his faith that conquered in a heavenly place, far above all principalities and powers. Are y'all with me? And so we have to understand, when we understand that, and we can behold that, then we can see that he, is the one that rejoices in the cross of Calvary. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Do you know you're the joy that was set before Jesus? He saw you being born again. He saw you coming out of drugs. He saw my wife coming out of a hammock and going and preaching the gospel to Europe and to, to Japan and going and preaching the gospel all over Central and South America and, and going and preaching the gospel all over her country. He saw it long before we did. Your destiny has been predestined by the power of God. Everything, every step, every walk, every talk, everything you do, God has planned something for your life. You're not just a mistake. God takes a mistake and makes it truth. He took a young man that was on drugs, tripping on acid, seated at a concert called the band Kansas, and they were singing the song, I'm on the point of no return. And as they sang that song, I'm looking, and the guy is playing his fiddle, and he takes his stick, and he goes like this, and the stick, the bow, comes all the way up in my face. I'm tripping on LSD. I'm a drug addict. And all of a sudden, the whole Colosseum disappeared. And Jesus appears on the cross of Calvary. And he's weeping. And all I saw was his eyes. But he took a young man that was just a kid, 15 years old, tripping on LSD. I'm good with this, I think. Is it working? Yeah, I think it's working. Went off. Off. Just went off, didn't it? One. Hallelujah. Did it come on? Test one, two. Not on. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Even though it's not on, you can hear me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But God finds the foolish things of this world and uses them mightily for his kingdom. I'll tell you, there's nothing that the doctors can say we'll never do. Because God says you can do all things. There's nothing the doctors can say that's incurable. Because God says I've already cured it. Come on somebody, y'all with me. Long before you were born, God created you in a place. Long before my wife was 
even born and laying in a hammock in a small town in Brazil. God had a place for her, and that was to preach the gospel all around the world. Even though teachers say that you're stupid, even though the education of this world says you're never going to go anywhere, even though the government says you're a failure, even though doctors say you need to be on meds, God has a plan. He has a destiny, and he has a purpose for your life. My wife spoke something very profound when she said, God moves on the purpose that he has for your life. See, your purpose is greater than anything this world can try to steal. Are you all with me now? The scripture tells us in the book of Acts chapter 4, I want you to go there with me. The Bible says in verse 13, now as they observed the confidence of Peter and John, and they understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as have being with Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. See, all you need is to be with Jesus. That's all you need. It's not about your education. It's not about your Bible school diploma. Come on, somebody, y'all with me now. It's not about your high school diploma. It's not about your, your, your theological training. I mean, the Bible says right there in that context in verse 13, it basically says it wasn't nothing to do with their education about the law. They didn't have any. But they arrived in Acts chapter 3 to a man that had been sitting at the gate called Beautiful for many years, and everybody in the city knew that that man was crippled. Every man, every person in the city knew that went to the temple realized that that man had no answer. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. They all knew that that man was there and that he knew he wasn't going to ever get anywhere in life. But the Bible says Peter and John walking by him looked on him and they looked up, he looked up at Peter and John because he thought they were going to give, or that he was going to give them money. And he looked at them, Peter, and said, silver and gold have I none. See, he didn't have a lot of money. He wasn't educated. He didn't have everything that all the other Pharisees and Sadducees and religious people had. He was just hungry for God. And he had been with Jesus. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. I'll tell you, you can change this world just being with Jesus. You can change this world just spending time with the King of glory. You have to open the gates and let the King of glory in. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. He's knocking on your door. He's saying, I'll go with you. I'll walk with you. I'll talk to you. I'll be with you. I'm inside of you. I will open doors that no man can shut. I will give you a future. I will give you everything you need in this life if you would just look at me. Because he's the beginner of our faith. Come on, somebody, y'all with me now. He's the beginner of our faith. When you go to bed, you see yourself walking, don't you? When you're sleeping, you see yourself walking, don't you? When you close your eyes, you see yourself walking, don't you? Why? Because that's who you are. You are what God created you to be. That's why he has you walking, because he says, I've created you to walk. I've created you to be healed. I've created you to be delivered from darkness and bondage. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. God created us to be the light in the darkness. He created us and brought us out and translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his light. Oh, hallelujah. 
That's why in the beginning God said, let there be light. Why? Because there was one day when somebody took a hold of that prophetic word and took a hold of what God had said, and his name was Jesus, and he said, I am the light. Hallelujah. I am the light. I am the way, and I am the truth. Come on, somebody. You all with me? When you look unto Jesus, Jesus will change your life forever. It's not a religious thing. Peter and John had been with Jesus. The Pharisees, the religious people realized this miracle is a notable miracle. The Bible says that it was a miracle that could not be explained away. It was a miracle that no man could deny. It was a miracle that was an extraordinary miracle because God could not or or man could not deny that Jesus had passed through that place. So they got together and they said, we're going to stop this from happening. How many remember in the word of God in Exodus chapter 1, the Bible tells us in verse 3, it says that, that the king, Pharaoh, got together and brought the leaders and said, let's stop the Israelites because they're multiplying, they're fruitful, they're conquering the land. And if we don't stop them, they will take over. But the Bible tells us that they knew something other than what the king knew because the king, according to verse 5, didn't know that they were blessed with the favor of Joseph. He was messing with the wrong person. I'm telling you, the devil's messing with you. He's messing with the wrong person. If the devil's messing with you, he's messing with the wrong person. If the devil's putting cancer on you, he's putting cancer on the wrong person. Come on, somebody, you are with me. If the the devil's trying to get you to believe you're losing your mind, he's messing with the wrong person. (laughs) That's why when you understand, see, my wife was in the hammock and she was seeing her future. I'll tell you, when you understand you're seated in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and from the foundation of the earth, God created you. He brought you into this world for a purpose. There's not a person in this place that doesn't have a purpose to live. (sighs) Come on, somebody. That's why the devil likes to kill people. Because he wants to take your purpose. That's why he wants you to believe that you don't have anything to live for. Because he wants to take your purpose. God has a purpose for your life. He has a plan. He has a destiny. See, the Bible tells us the preaching that I preach in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. It's not with enticing words of men's wisdom but it's in demonstration and power. Peter and John were uneducated. If you look in the same context in verse 3, they're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Peter, uh, Paul says, I have made it known that I don't want to know anything about you. He was basically saying, I don't want to know anything at all about this world. I am crucified to this world. This world means nothing to me. It don't have anything for me. I am a, he said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees, according to Philippians chapter 3. I've been to Hebrew of Hebrews. Knowing the law, I know it better than most of the Pharisees. I'm a Jew, but I'm also a Roman. Paul was saying, I'm all these things, but I leave it all as dung because it means nothing to me. It's not my merit that brings me into the presence of God. It's the name of Jesus. That's why when Peter and John looked at this man and he looked at them and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give you in the name of Jesus. Rise! And he rose up and was healed. It's not in his name. It's not in his faith. It was not in his education. It was not in his Bible school abilities. 
It was not in his theological concepts and ideologies. It was not in his religion. It was not in his praise and worship. It was not in any of those things. It was that he had been with Jesus. And when you've been with Jesus, you know that there's power. In the name of Jesus. Stand up here. The Lord's going to set you free. I heard the Spirit of God say, many tears, many tears, many tears you have brought before my throne. And you have cried out like the children of Israel cried out in Egypt and said, God, deliver me, deliver me. And you have felt that at times God is not listening. But the Lord says, daughter, I hear every cry. I put every tear in a valve in heaven so that you know that in that valve is every seed sown into the earth. And I hear your heart. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 3 that Moses was on the backside of the desert running from God. He didn't want to do what God called him to do. He was running from God. And all of a sudden, he heard a popping. He heard a sound, and it was a fire that was on a bush. His first thought was, I need to put this fire out because I'm taking care of the sheep. I'm protecting the land. But he walked up, and as he walked up, the voice of God spoke out of that bush and said to him, I've heard their cry. I've heard their cry. He didn't say, I heard your cry, Moses. He said, I heard their cry. I heard the cry of the Israelites. And he said, now go and tell them I am. God says, I've heard your cry, daughter. Raise your hands up there. The power of God is going to come upon you. And all the seeds that you've sowed in tears are going to reproduce in joy. Joy is what heals. Joy is what delivers. Joy is what causes you to go to a place that's far above depression, far above oppression, far above possession. (sighs) And the Lord says, you're seated in that place. And he who recognizes where he's seated can laugh because the enemy is under your feet. That's why when you're in, when you get a revelation of heaven, you laugh a lot. People ask me all the time, why you laugh so much? Because I know where I'm seated. (laughs) I know that I'm seated above every principality and power. I know that I'm seated above sickness and disease. I know that I'm seated above poverty. Now, there's the power of God coming on you right now. I release the anointing of God, and I come against the spirit of fear, fear of the future, anxieties of the future. I bind you up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I thank you, Father, for changing her sadness. (sighs) Stand up here with me, Lexi. Lay your hands on her. And release that anointing of everlasting joy that breaks the power and the bondage of defeat and of oppression and fear. In the name of Jesus, I command you now, you spirit of fear, get off her life. And from this day forward, Your tears shall be turned.
to laughter, says the Spirit of the Lord. I release her now. <sighs> now stand back up here because you fell into a chair. I don't want you to fall into a chair. I want you to get saturated. <sighs> Touch her again next because the anointing of joy is on you. Lay your hands on her and release it. It's joy. It's joy. It's joy. <laughs> there it goes right there. There it goes right there. I release it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Bible tells us, I've prepared a place. See, Peter and John were unlearned and ignorant. God wants to use everybody. He wants to use us all. I'm losing my usher tonight. The anointing's coming on the next generation tonight. The Lord already told me that. <sighs> this whole row, stand up, take hands, raise them up. There's a greater glory that comes on the next generation. <sighs> I heard the spirit, the spirit of the Lord say, tonight I'm going to touch and bring a revelation to the next generation. <sighs> Revelation of God began to flow of the power that's inside of them. I release it right now in the name of Jesus. <sighs> here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Receive, receive, receive. All of it right now in Jesus' name. There it goes. Take it, take it, take it. You get drunk. How many think Nicholas should get drunk? <laughs> they're not drunk as you suppose, the Bible says, but they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know what was the name? <laughs> See, Jesus said the works that I do, so shall you do, but greater works. And I began to meditate on that, and I realized it's not talking about more works than what Jesus did. It's not talking about greater works than what Jesus did. But he said this in finishing that verse in, in John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, because, there's the answer, because I go to the Father. Shh. Do you remember what he said in John chapter 14, verse 1? He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. And don't worry about tomorrow. Because I'm going to take you to a place. It's in the Father's house. And there you'll dwell. There you will be a place where the Spirit of God will manifest himself through you down here on the earth. And he says, the works that I do, greater works you'll do because I go to the Father. He was saying, I go to the Father because I'm going to send you now a double portion of what was on me. And he's going to dwell inside of you. Just like Elijah received a double portion from Elijah. Just like Joshua received a double portion from Moses. Just like David received a double portion from, from Samuel. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. I'm telling you, when you understand where you're seated, there is no principality. There is no power. There is no devil. There is no sickness. There is no poverty. There is no destruction that can come nigh your dwelling because God has ordained and predestined your life from the foundation of the earth before you were even born. He created you to dwell in a place of triumph. 
Ven conmigo. I'm talking to you in Portuguese. Come up here. The power of God's falling on you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, give him more. <laughs> give him more right now in Jesus' name. Somebody get behind him. The anointing God's falling on him right now in the name of Jesus. Give him more, Lord. <laughs> Saturate him. Saturate him. Saturate him with the power of God. Somebody say the power of God. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He did not leave us comfortless. He sent the power that raised him from the dead. He sent, that's why Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have is the power that's in the name of Jesus. See, sickness and disease is not in heaven. It's under our feet. Poverty is under our feet. And when we understand that we've been given a name that's above all names, that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord over sickness. Lord over, over anything that comes against us. Lord over poverty. Are y'all with me? He's given us a name that in that name is the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And that spirit's inside of you. That's why Peter and John said, I don't know. I, I, there's nothing I have in the natural. There's nothing I've done in the natural. It's not my education. It's not my training. It's not anything I can do. Sometimes I can barely even speak. But I know one thing. I have something that's powerful that's inside of me, and it's the name of Jesus. And this man walks not because of my own power and my own ability or my own education. This man walks because of the power that's in the name of Jesus. See, inside of you is the greater one. Greater is he that's inside you than he that's in this world. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, look at this with me in verse, two, verse 1 of chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. When I first came to you, my brothers and sisters, I did not come with lofty words. Paul saying, I didn't come to you with lofty words or to impress you with my wisdom or to tell you a secret plan that comes from the wisdom of man. No, I decided I didn't want to know anything about you. I love what Pastor Joel says all the time. He says, when I sit down with Brother Brad, we don't talk about you. And I love that because I don't want to know anything about you. I don't want to know anything about this church. I don't want to know anything about any individual in this church. Why? Because I want my faith to be in him. And it's because in him I live. In him I dwell. And in him I have my being. And so when I understand it's not by my lofty words of preaching, it's not by my wisdom that I've gained from Bible school. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. But look what he says. I've decided I don't want to know anything about you. The apostle Paul said, and I started this way in the beginning in Philippians chapter 3. Go with me to Philippians chapter 3, and then we're going to come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 3. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Of course, in Philippians chapter 2, we have the reality of Jesus becoming a baby, coming down to the earth, becoming in the same image, the same position that we are, gave himself of his reputation, his calling, everything he had. And laid it down and become a baby. Because he had to become nothing to be the greater one. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And he says, I do that and I understand that. Why? Because I live by faith. 
And then in verse 21, he says, because I don't want to frustrate the grace of God. Do you know what the grace of God did? The grace of God is what lifted me in Christ and caused me to dwell in a heavenly place by the mercy and the grace of God. I am seated in heavenly places in him. And in him, I'm healed. In him, I'm delivered. In him, I'm prosperous. In him, I have everything the word of God declares I am. It's not about my education. Peter and John had no education. They had no training. They were used of God because they realized it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of God that's inside of me that these mountains will be moved. The grace of God is what lifted you up. When you realize like the Apostle Paul I have to become like Jesus. We sang that song. I decrease so that he can increase. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that Jesus can increase. We have to go to a place where it's no longer us that lives. It's no longer our education. It's no longer our own abilities. It's no longer what we know or what we don't know. But we only know one thing. I'm in Him. And in Him dwells the fullness of God. That's why the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, same context. It tells us in verse 10. He says, if you can be found in him and him be found in you, and if you believe that he's in you and that you're in him, then you will ask anything and it shall be given. And then he goes on to say, and the works that I do, so shall you do, but even greater. You know why it's greater? Because he went to the Father to sit down, and in that place he sent us the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and put him inside your belly. Somebody's got ulcers in their stomach. Somebody's been dealing with a gastritis that's burning in the stomach area. And the Lord told me it's ulcers. But it's a burning sense. Maybe you don't even know it's an ulcer. But the Lord says it is. (laughs) And that burning sense will stop tonight. Whoever that person is, stand up. Stand up. Stand out in the middle of the aisle, Brooklyn. Honey, come here with me. See, when we don't know anything of anybody, that's when God can do the things that he does. Put your hands on her belly and release that anointing. The fire of God consume right now. Every burning sense that's in the gut area. In Jesus' name. There goes right there. There goes right there. Take it. (sighs) There's another lady. Pray for her. Release that same anointing. And this man over here, I heard in the spirit, God's healing you of the same situation. Stand up, sir. Yep. The power of God's coming on you right now. Release it. Release it in Jesus' name. We speak to the gut area. We speak, yes, Lord, amen. The Lord just said to me, reflux, reflux, the burning sense that comes to the heart and comes up into the throat and even causes your throat to be sore is disappearing tonight. In Jesus' name, there it goes right there. Receive it, receive it. Silver and gold have I none, but such as we have. We give to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Sir, stand out in the aisle. I don't know why, but I kept hearing in the spirit, God's healing you in that area too. Raise your hands up there. There's an anointing coming over your gut area, over your stomach area. There's an anointing that's breaking a yoke off of your life right now in the name of Jesus. There it goes, 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 there it goes. I release now, Father. 
That's it. Take it, 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 take it. Come up here. Is this your husband, boyfriend? I want you to take his hand because God's going to give a new beginning. I heard the Spirit of God say a new beginning. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's marriage. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to prophesy something I don't know. But I heard new beginning. The enemy stole from you. The enemy took from you. The enemy stopped even your call. (sighs) God's called you. There's things inside of you that he used in the past that he's not finished using. And the Lord says, I'm stirring up a fresh anointing over your life. And I brought you an intercessor. I brought you a prayer warrior. I brought you someone that knows me because the enemy stole from you. This very base and foundation. But there's a new anointing and a new beginning. Stand up there, raise your hands up there. The Lord says there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. The Lord says in the same context of Philippians chapter 3 that I'm trying to get to, the Bible tells us, Paul said, I count everything in my life but dung. It's all garbage. My education my training, everything that I think I am. I count it all as loss so that I might win Christ. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. It's the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. And he says, I count it all dung so that I might win that anointing. And then he says in verse 9, I was going to try to go there, but I'll just quote it. But he says in verse 9, he says, I don't want to be found in myself. I want to be found in him. I don't want to be found in my own righteousness. I want to be found in the righteousness which is found in faith. I don't want to be found in me. I want to be found in him. And then he goes on to say, I want to know him in that upper taking power that takes me to a place that's far above everything in this earth. I want to know him in the resurrection power. I want to know him seated at the right hand of God. I want to know him that is in a place that's far above sickness and far above disease. Come up here. The power of God is falling on you right now. There's a joy that's coming back to your life. There's a joy that's coming back to your life. Joy! Fill her, Lord, right now with a fresh anointing of joy. Oh, I don't know what you understand, but when the Bible says that we're found in him and know him in the power of resurrection, the Bible tells us greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, and that Christ in you is the hope of seeing his glory. Oh, come on, somebody, all with me. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The Lord says, I'm healing you right now in Jesus' name. I don't know what it is, but something to do with the blood. There's some type of a contamination. That's being revived right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, I know it's a generational curse and we break it off of her life in the name of Jesus. We say that every spirit of low blood sugar, every spirit that's in this family, it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to the blood and I command it to be completely uncontaminated. 
<laughs> now. Take it, take it, take it, take it. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Drink it in, drink it in. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Moses said, Lord, I want to see your glory. He said, hide yourself in me, and I'll let my glory pass by. I'll let my goodness pass by. His goodness and his mercy is healing. His goodness and his mercy is deliverance. His goodness and his mercy. <sighs> there it goes right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. I can't even touch it because every time I do, the anointing begins to be stronger on you. But I'm going to let the anointing just saturate you right now. There it goes in Jesus' name. The Lord said to me, if you're dealing with diabetes, stand up. <sighs> Come down here in the front. Right now, I'm going to lay hands on you. I heard the Spirit of God just say that to me, and I'm going to lay hands on you. We're going to break that off of your life in the name of Jesus. How many believe that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken our mortal flesh. Raise your hands up there. Just close your eyes. I can't heal a fly's wing. Jesus has already healed you. Jesus has already delivered you. Jesus has already set you free. But right now, the power that's in the name of Jesus can cause you just like the man at the gate called beautiful to rise up and be healed in Jesus' name right now in the name of Jesus. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. The Lord said, sir, I'm restoring what the canker worm has stolen. I'm giving back to you what the palmer worm has eaten. And I'm giving back to you what the locust has left behind. And I'm going to bring back a wealth and a blessing over your life that you lost. <sighs> Raise your hands up there and just receive the anointing of God's coming upon you right now. In Jesus' name, I release in Jesus' name the healing power of God over her body. And I command in Jesus' name the word diabetes. diabetes. Go! In Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says he's given us a name. That's above every name. Diabetes is a name. It has to bow its knees and it has to confess Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is Lord and greater is he. Whew, there it goes right there. There it goes right there. I release the resurrection power of God over him now. In Jesus' name. There it goes. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. The Lord is taking people to a place tonight that's above all principalities and powers. That's a place where we can laugh. It's a place where we can go, you're a liar, devil. You're under our feet. In Jesus' name. The anointing's on you right now. Raise your hand. Kingdom is now. Amen. His kingdom's not coming. It's now. It's inside of you. It's righteousness. It's peace. And it's joy in the Holy Ghost. I release it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the anointing coming upon Pastor Joe right now. And I thank you for the healing power of God causing diabetes, which is a name. To bow its knees and confess, Jesus is Lord. Lord over diabetes. Lord over infirmity. Lord over sickness. Lord over weakness. Lord over fatigue. Lord over our heart. And I command in the name of Jesus for this body to be whole. In Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, Father. 
in Jesus' name. And, Father, I release right now a name that's above diabetes. <laughs> Your eyes will not grow dim. Your eyes will not grow dark. Your body will be what God created it to be. <sighs> That's the power of God coming on you right now. The Lord told me this is a generational curse. I'm going to break it off of you. It will no longer go through the family. This spirit of infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak to you right now, diabetes. And I command you to bow your knees and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over this man's life, over his children's life, and over his children's children's life. And I break it from this generation down and say the same spirit that tries to take your life will not take the life of any more. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing of God is falling right now. The same anointing that healed your foot is the same anointing that causes your blood to be cleansed and causes diabetes to stop. I release. There it goes right there. That's the anointing coming upon you right now. Honey, where are you at, sweetheart? Come. Come, 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 come. Lay your hands on her and release that anointing. In Jesus' name. <sighs> Hallelujah. 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 Touch it, honey. Release that anointing. It's a name that's above all names. Oh, hallelujah. There it goes, 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 there it goes. <laughs> Stand her back up here. I'm going to take you to a higher place. He that sits in heaven laughs. He that sits in heaven knows. There's a glory that God wants to show. <sighs> joy, joy, joy. Filling her. <sighs> there it goes right there. There it goes. Somebody goes, <laughs> Yeah, just go ahead and laugh. The anointing's all over you. <laughs> See, Paul said, I want to know you in the power of the resurrection. The Bible tells us we're saved by grace. And by grace, we have been raised in him, in resurrection power. Paul said, I want to know him in power. I want to know him in that upper taking anointing. Stand up here. The same anointing's coming on you. He that sits in heaven laughs. <laughs> there's a place where we go in the glory. The Bible says that there's glory in laughter. The Bible tells us laughter does good like a medicine. <sighs> Paul knew. That his preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration. 
He would demonstrate the Holy Spirit. If you look in the same context of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it goes on to say, I don't want to know anything. I just want to know Him. I don't want to know education. I just want to know Him. Why? Because religious people cannot deny the power of the cross because it's foolishness to them, but it's the power of God unto us. Just like my wife said, the power of the cross is resurrection. He that sits in heaven laughs. Stand up the two of you. You say, well, why are they laughing? Because they're seated in heaven. See, it's in heaven that we have a different perspective. Oh, come on, somebody. It's in heaven we have a different perspective. So when the devil comes and says, I think I'm going to take your life, we can laugh. When the devil comes and says, I think I'll put cancer back on you, we can laugh. When the devil comes along and says, I think I'll put you back in the hospital, we can laugh. Because we know where we're seated. Somebody watch all three of them because the power of God's about to fall on them all. Somebody go, laugh. Yeah, there's a place there. (laughs) <laughs> greater is he <laughs> greater is he that's in you <laughs> than he that's in this world I'm not in this world I'm not of this world I'm of heaven I'm born from above Before I even knew that I would be born again, the Lord called me, gave me a place in heaven, made me a dwelling place for his glory. While I was yet a sinner, while I was yet in bondage, he called me a saint. He called me a Christian. He called me a new creation. He called me healed. He called me full of joy. God calls things that be not as though they were. This whole row stand up. This whole row stand up. You can't get down on your seat now. (sighs) Take hands, raise them up, all of you. Take hands, raise them up. The power of God's going to fall on the whole family. The Bible tells us, in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will get their dream back. I'll tell you, there goes right there. There goes right there. There goes right there. There's the anointing of God coming on this second row right now. See, religious people don't like the move of God. But that's why the Bible says in the last days there'll be a form of godliness, but we will deny power. Here it comes. Receive it now. Take it, son. The power of God's all over you. Here it comes, son. Receive it. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, this is what Paul knew. Paul knew it wasn't by his education. 
It was all done. It didn't mean anything. But he knew that he had the power that raised Jesus from the dead in his belly. I'll tell you right now, you need a miracle. God's here right now to demonstrate his word on our behalf. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. Stand up, Brooklyn, get some of this anointing. Take it right now in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Here it comes. There's a greater anointing. God has called you from your mother's womb before you were even thought of being created. The devil tried to take your life. The devil tried to destroy you. But God said, I have a purpose for her. I have a plan for her. I have a destiny for her. And I thank you, Father God, that tonight your destiny, your purpose, and your plan is being fulfilled in her life and that you've got greater things, Lord. I keep hearing that song, greater things are yet to come. Greater things are yet to come. Greater things are yet to come. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. That's the anointing. Greater things are yet to come. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. Stand up. God's healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands up here. Raise your hands. I heard the Spirit of God come on me when I walked by you, and I saw an attack on your life that has tried to stop you from fulfilling what God has for your life. And it's a devil that's continually coming after you and saying, I'm going to move you to this direction. I'm going to move you to this direction, to this direction, to that direction. And God says, I have you where I want you. And I'm going to develop you. And I'm going to call you. And I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Because deep inside of you, you want nothing but Jesus. And the Lord said, I'm going to use you. In this generation, I'll tell you right now, you've got things that you need to impart to this church. (sighs) You've got things that God's put in you as a young man that needs to be imparted to this young generation. And God said, I'm not finished using you in this place. I've got things I want to do. I've got things I want to do inside of you. In Jesus' name, I release, Father, the anointing. I keep seeing spiritual fathers that have departed. Spiritual fathers that were around you. (sighs) The Lord says there's many teachers but few fathers. And I see your spiritual fathers departing always. God said, I'm not finished, son. I have greater things I want to do through you. You go where he leads you. You go where he leads you. You're here for a purpose. And God has a purpose for your life. And I kept hearing by the Spirit of God, and it confirms what you just said. Spiritual fathers around you have lost the vision. They've lost the things that carried you to where you're at today. And God says, I have more for you. Hook up. Hook up. Get connected. We sang the song about faithfulness. That's what God's saying. Put your hand to the plow. It's time to work. The harvest is plenty. The reason why it says the harvest is plenty is because we can't make excuses. There's no excuses in this house. Come on, somebody, y'all with me. There's no excuses in this house. Amen? There's no excuses in this house. And we're not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And I keep seeing the Spirit of God that's on you is not finished manifesting himself in your life. 
and in the purpose that he's called you to. You're not too young. You're never too young. The Bible tells us it's not about what you know. I just preached that. It's but the power that's inside of you. You said, I have decided to follow Jesus. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. There, look, look at the young men behind you. He preaches to everybody he sees. He goes into a restaurant. He's getting people saved. Come on, somebody, yell with me. You could do the same. You, I don't. Do you go to church here? There's no excuse. Come on, somebody. No excuse. Look at your pastor and say, I'm stopping making excuses. Come on, somebody. You all with me? So, someone's being healed in their right knee right now. I had that word last night, but I'm having it again. Someone is being healed in their right knee. Stand up if that's you. You've been having problems in your right knee. The power of God's here to heal you. Silver and gold have I none, but I know one thing. The power of God is here to heal. Do you have pain in that knee now? You got stitches? But it's, uh, that could be a man. Why not? God will, the Bible tells us that he'll give us a speeded healing. Amen. When doctors cut us open, we can thank God that we'll have a speeded healing. Amen. That means we'll have no infection. We'll have no outbreaks. We'll have nothing that will be contrary to the word of God on what they did on our body. Amen. So let's believe God tonight. You're going to have a speed of healing in your knee. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. Why did you get stitches? It was a what? A work accident? Was it a cut? And you had to get stitches just to keep it shut and clear? Raise your hands up there. We agree with you right now in Jesus' name that this knee will recover speedily. In Jesus' name. Now, there it goes right there. The Lord told me about the knee, so I, I believe with all my heart if God's saying that's you, which I don't believe it is. There's somebody here that has a cartilage that's completely destroyed, and it's bone on bone. And the Lord said he'll heal you tonight if you receive it. But there's the anointing coming over you right now. In Jesus' name, I release it, Father. And I command this need to be restored back to what it was created to be. I thank you for a speeded healing right now in Jesus' name. You believe it? I do too. Hallelujah. Now, where's the person that has a right cartilage that's completely destroyed? Who is that? I heard it by the Spirit. Is that you? Stand up right there where you're at. I don't even have to. Stand right down the row in the middle of the aisle, if you would. The power of God's going to fall on you. Raise your hands up there. Close your eyes. <laughs> he drinks a lot, doesn't he? He's a drinker. You're a drinker. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> he, <whew, woo! laughs> you know, I was just getting ready to say he's a drinker, not a thinker. And when you drink, you don't think. You just take off running. Hallelujah. Raise your hands up there. The power of God's coming on you right now. I speak to this right knee, and I command the cartilage to be completely restored and brought back to new. And she, there it goes right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. That's the power of God falling on you right now. In Jesus' name, wind of God blow upon her now. There it goes right there. That's it right there. That's it right there. That's 
Yeah, we just saw him take off running. He came with a cane. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now come here. Move that knee around. It's good. You had pain in that. What's wrong with the other leg? It's prosthetic. But that knee, you know, a lot of times the knee begins to lose its cartilage because you're, you're favoring the other leg. It does it all the time. I don't believe God wants that for, on your behalf. Amen. I believe with all my heart the cartilage is being restored in your leg right now in Jesus' name. Completely. Why? Because God has compassion. Amen. God has compassion on us. He, he loves us. You know, I asked the Lord one time, what is compassion? You know what he told me? He said, it's a heart-throbbing obedience to meet someone else's need. That changed my life. Because, you know, you can flow in the Holy Ghost and you can flow in the gifts and, and get out of that place of compassion because you're just flowing in what he's already given you. But if you ever lose that place of compassion, then the anointing will start to wean, and you'll lose it. Whew. Power of God's still on you right now. I keep seeing it greater, greater. I heard the Lord say there's a restoration coming to your house. The devil entered in and stole the authority of the priest. With that came a rebellion that was released over the house. The Lord said, I'm bringing them back. Your children will serve the Lord. Your children will honor God. Your children will know that you as a mother have sacrificed all what they need. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I am not finished giving you joy in life. The weapon formed against you that tried to kill you, that at times you felt like your family didn't even care. The Lord said, I cared. And I loved you. And I broke the curse that tried to take your life. It might have taken a part of your body. But it can't take your life. And I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm bringing a blockage to the enemy and to the spirit of infirmity that continually attacks you. That's it right there. Receive it. Take a deep breath and just breathe in the life of God. I saw, Rachel, come here, please. Put your hand right here. I saw in the spirit a restoration over this area of your body. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, and I, I think it's in this back row, has been having pain in their lower back. Is that you, Nicholas? And that's you also? Come over here. I'm flowing in the Holy Spirit, and in the Holy Spirit, you operate in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Raise your hands up there, Nicholas. I release the anointing of God. You're too young to have pain in your lower back. Amen. Amen. And I command in Jesus' name this attack that continually attacks his lower back. In, I, heard, 
I heard something by the Spirit of God, and I never, I never heard this before, but the Lord said it's not about your bed. It's about the Word. He sent His Word and healed you. And the healing power of God's coming on you right now, and I release the anointing over the lower back. In, oh, there it goes right there. There it goes right there. That's the power of God. I, I, I don't, sometimes I don't touch people because sometimes God's doing the surgery. The Holy Spirit's doing the surgery. So let him do it. Whew. There it goes right there. Take it now. 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 Receive in Jesus' name. That's the power of God. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Whew. The resurrection power of God going into this lower back and bringing a complete restoration and reformation in this body. In Jesus' name. There it goes right there, Nicholas. Take it. That's the power of God. I'm not going to touch you. No, but the anointing's all over you. Sister, raise your hands up. The power of God's coming on you right now, and I release this lower back and say, no more in Jesus' name. I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I like what she's got on. Knock out. Let's knock the devil out tonight. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come over here. The Lord told me to do something. Touch your toes. You'll see that you can do it and you couldn't do it before. The power of God's already healed you. You had pain when you came? On and off. It's not coming back in Jesus' name. How many believe that? You had pain when you came? Pain all over every day. When you bend down and touch your toes, did you feel pain? It's gone, isn't it? Raise your hands up there because there's something more God wants to do. Whew. I keep hearing in the Spirit, and I, I, I've been getting this word a lot, so, you know, and, and I think it has a lot to do with COVID, vaccines, all the junk that's out there. But I've been hearing the word palpitations, almost like something coming over your heart. Whew. The power of God is coming on you right now in Jesus' name. And I break the spirit of panic, the spirit that causes an attack to come over her, a spirit that causes the, the, the heart to over-accelerate. In the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, I command you, spirit of infirmity, serpent, I command you, go, release her. See, the serpent is a symbol of pharmaceutical drugs. And a lot of times we give ourselves over to pharmaceutical drugs because we don't have an answer. But the truth of the matter is we have an answer. Jesus, he sent his word and healed us. Now look at me in my eyes right now in the name of Jesus. I command right now this to be broken off of your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I say no more, no more. In Jesus' name. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. In Jesus' name, take it. Receive it. Take a deep breath and release it harsh. It, hard, that's it. Do it again. Release. In Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to, glory to God. Stand up here and get some of this. Stand up here and get some of this. The anointing God's all over you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand up and get some of this. There's a joy here tonight. <laughs> There's a healing anointing flowing in this place tonight. Stand up and walk. 
Amen. Stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. Come on, somebody. Now walk out here. Stand up and walk. That's it. Walk out here. In the name of Jesus, I command this body to function now in Jesus' name. Body, I command you to function. I command the legs. I command the vertebrae. I command the brain to be completely restored in Jesus' name. Right now, I was in a meeting one time, and I got done the meeting, and I walked by a lady that was sitting in a wheelchair, and I just looked at her, and I said, how long are you going to stay in that wheelchair? And she looked at me, and she said, no more. I said, then get up and walk. And she jumped up out of that wheelchair and started walking all over the place. I went back to Brazil some 18 years after, and the man that met me at the airport said, that was my grandmother. She's now 80 years old, and she's been out of the wheelchair her whole life. But it was her decision to do what you just did. It was her decision that said, I'm not going to sit here in it. I'm going to get up and walk. Your faith makes you whole. I heard the Spirit of God tell me that the enemy tried to kill you through this accident. But he can't. And he can't paralyze you either. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. And, Father, I release the resurrection power of God over my brother right now. In Jesus' name, I command this leg to begin to operate to the perfection which you created it to operate. I command every joint, every muscle, every bone, and every nerve to be completely restored from the brain down, from the top of the head to the soles of his feet. I command this body to function in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now, there it is. The power of God's all over you, sir. The power of God's all over you. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. In Jesus' name. <sighs> That's the anointing. Now, move that leg around. Give me your hand. That's it. Move that leg. Just that one leg. That's it. That's it. Lift it up. That's it. And move it again. In Jesus' name. 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 Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, now, just stand that leg and go like this. That's it. In Jesus' name. That's it right there. I release that resurrection power over you. In Jesus' name. What's your name, sir? Goreen. Corrine. Corrine. You're healed, Corrine. Amen. How many believe he's healed? Now what you need to do is just practice that. Amen. Just walk, walk him back to the seat or wherever. Just walk around with him a little bit. Praise God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now if you're here tonight and, and you're not going to be here tomorrow, and you need a touch from God, you need healing, I want you to raise your hand right now. Amen. Come up here, sir. Anybody else? You're not going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow we have service at 2 o'clock. 
at 2 o'clock we have service, and there'll be miracles tomorrow. Somebody say hallelujah. He don't want back in that thing. He don't even want back in that thing, does he? Somebody say hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you're not going to be here tomorrow, I want you to raise your hand right now and say, I want prayer. Amen. You want prayer? Come up here. You want prayer? Look at that. He's moving his foot around like <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. <sighs> what do you need prayer for, sir? Your body? You have pain all over your body or what is it? Shoulders and back. Shoulders and back. You have pain there now? Yeah. Who brought you here? You brought yourself? Him? <laughs> I remember I was preaching one time. The reason why I asked is because I was preaching one time in Columbia, South America, and one of my missionaries went over to a man's house that was blind and sat down with him for literally about four hours preaching to him the word of God and that he was healed, what the word says about his healing. And uh, so I get to the meeting, and when I get to the meeting, all of a sudden I'm right in the middle of the, my message, and I'm preaching on hope against hope. And all of a sudden this man starts screaming out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And so I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, pray for him. So I didn't have enough faith. I kept preaching. And then all of a sudden he screamed out. And he said, I have faith. And when he said that, I had to stop in my tracks. And I called him over, and he was in a wheelchair, and he came over and was right in front of me. I didn't know, but that woman, my missionary, had prepared him for his miracle. And I heard that's why I asked you, who brought you? You said you brought yourself. But then you turned to him and you said, he's the one that told you, right? Your faith is going to make him whole tonight. I want you to close your eyes and just receive the resurrection power of God's coming over your shoulder and over your back and over your neck. The glory of the Lord is manifesting right now in Jesus' name. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. I release the resurrection power of the cross. Whew. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. There it goes right there. I release it over him now in Jesus' name. There it goes, sir. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. That's the power of God. Whew. Now, before you can think about it, raise your hands. Twist your back. Move it around. Go like this. You have no more pain. Move it around. You feel pain? No. <laughs> Your faith has made him whole. Do you know Jesus? You were born again. Spirit filled, you love God. You're healed, brother. You're healed in Jesus' name. Look at me once. Move your back around. You couldn't do that before. It was hard to stand before, but now you can. You can go back to work. Amen. <laughs> This brother here, you receive from him. God's going to do something great in this man right here. The Lord says, there's so much that you have to offer, but you hide it under a bushel, and you keep it hidden away from others. And the Lord said, there's no, I'm going to say it again, no excuses. <laughs> There's things God wants to do in your life. 
He wants to use you in this house. He wants to use you in your house. The Lord said, you're the priest of your home, and he's honored. <sighs> what are you believing for, sir? Brother, I'm crying out to God like blind Bartimaeus did on the road. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. I've had prostate cancer for 25 years. And it's moved and spread into my body in six places. They, it's what they tell me. I believe I'm healed, but that's what they tell me. And I'm on chemo. It's all over you right now. It's all over you right now. <laughs> but I heard there was a, a man of God coming by. So I'm hollering, Father, have mercy upon me. Father, have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus, Father. Father God, you heard his cry. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the spirit of cancer that's spreading throughout his body. I command the spirit of infirmity. Lord, you've given me authority over cancer. You've given me a name that's above every name. That name is Jesus. And I command right now the spirit of infirmity and the spirit of cancer that is spreading through his body in six different places. Cease. Come out and loose him of this bondage in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. I speak resurrection. Let him fall. That's the power of God. Somebody say, the devil is a liar. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come up here. What do you need, hon? Respiratory. Raise your hands up there. Close your eyes. Honey, come up here with me if you would, sweetheart. Put your hands right over her lungs. The Lord shows me that you need to realize that your past is your past. And that you need to realize that you left your past a long time ago. And that you cannot return to the puke and the vomit of your past. But the Lord shows me you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself. Healing begins forgiving yourself of that past because God says the healing power of God's inside of you and it will quicken your mortal flesh. It'll cause your lungs to be completely cleansed. It'll cause your lungs to be completely healed. It will cause your lungs to revive and never return to what they were. In the name of Jesus, I release it now. In Jesus' name. <sighs> In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come up here, sweetie. What do they need prayer for? Little. Amen. Raise your hands up there and close your eyes. They're coming up here for their brother. Because their brother has been tested with something. And they want prayer for him. Hallelujah. I believe God's going to heal their brother. Amen. Because of their faith. Because of their faith. Father, I release the resurrection power of God over this young lady right now. In Jesus' name. Father, I release the anointing of God over him in Jesus' name, and I command this brother to be completely restored. Father, I speak to this, quote, diagnostic that's been given against him. And we say it's a curse. And the curse, when it has no purpose, it will not manifest. 
So I speak healing over his brother right now in Jesus' name. There goes the power of God taken in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Father, we continue to thank you that our brother is healed of blindness in Jesus' name. I continue to thank you that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, conquering the last enemy on the cross, is the same spirit that's inside of him rising up against blindness because it does not belong to him and commanding healing to this body. We come in agreement and declare over our brother that blindness will no longer keep him bound. In Jesus' name, we speak healing, we speak resurrection, and we speak power over his body. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. There's the power of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we release it now, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, tomorrow, 2 o'clock, we'll be coming back. Amen. And, and we don't know what the Lord's going to do, but tomorrow I'm going to pray for everybody. I, I just have that in my spirit. And so I don't know what God's going to do, but there's a purpose for it. And so we're going to do that. Amen. So we appreciate everybody here. We appreciate you coming out to the meetings. Many miracles. If you were healed during these meetings, raise your hands. Look at these people around here. Look at this. God's doing miracles in this house. Can you say amen? amen. Miracles in this house. And, you know, the Bible tells us, and that's where I started. It was a notable miracle. It was a miracle that couldn't be denied. Is she up here for prayer also? What do you need? You're coming tomorrow. Amen. Well, I appreciate that. Amen. You know, what you have to do, sometimes you have to, you have to be obedient. Amen. Because sometimes the Lord will tell me, you know, pray for everybody or pray a prayer line or don't do anything. Amen. You just have to be obedient. Praise God. Pastor Joel, you can come up and take it. Rachel. Pastor Rachel, come up. Here. Amen. Amen.